The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome to Element 14 Presents. I'm Cisco, and in today's episode, we're going to build a do-it-yourself photo booth powered by Raspberry Pi using a Raspberry Pi 4, an official Raspberry Pi camera and enclosure, and an official 7-inch touchscreen display, we're going to put together a photo booth that runs open source software and you can simply use by clicking on the touchscreen display. All right, let's do this. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In this video, we're going to build a Raspberry Pi powered selfie photo booth. I will go step by step on how to assemble the hardware inside a modified case and the software that we'll need to run the touchscreen selfie photo booth. This will allow us to operate the photo booth with a simple press on the screen and we will finish by installing additional software so that we can easily access our photos. For this video, I'm going to be using parts that can be easily found in the Newark.com website. Specifically, I'll use the official 7-inch touchscreen display, a Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer, and an official Raspberry Pi camera. As you'll see in the video, I'll include additional components, but this can change depending on your personal preference. After getting all the components out of their respective boxes, it's time to assemble them together. A few things to keep in mind is the orientation of the ribbon cable connector, the pins that are used for powering the display, the orientation of the Raspberry Pi relative to the display controller board, and even using some sort of reference label for the pinout of the Raspberry Pi so that you don't confuse any of the pins. Also double checking that your connections to the ribbon cables are secure and that you're using the correct ports for both the display and the camera. With the hardware assembled, it's time to load the micro SD card with the Raspbian operating system. I've shown how to do this in a different video, but the gist of it is that we download an image from the official Raspberry Pi website, we flash it onto an SD card, and we create a couple of additional files, and those files will allow me to connect to the Raspberry Pi from my computer without the need of a monitor. Once we've loaded the Raspbian operating system onto the SD card, we can plug it into our Raspberry Pi. Having done that, we can connect it to power, and with the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, we can establish a connection over SSH. Once we do that, we'll want to update and upgrade the packages installed by default on the operating system. The first thing we'll want to do is configure the camera. We'll do this by running the raspi config command and going into the interfacing options, then camera and enabling the interface. The operating system will need to reboot and once we're able to log back in, we can use the raspi still command to test out the camera. To find out if the image came out correctly, I'll open a new tab on my terminal and use the command line utility SCP to copy it over to my computer. With everything looking fine, I'll go ahead and delete it, close the tab, and proceed to install the photo booth software. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. These are product reviews conducted by Element 14 community members like you. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff. Using the command git, 
I'll clone the repository onto my user folder on the Raspberry Pi. I'll install a few software dependencies as instructed on the repository page. Notice that in the latest version of the Raspbian operating system, the names of the packages are a little different. Although we're not going to be using all the touch selfie features in this video, I'll make sure we have all the dependencies installed. This include an additional browser and a couple of Python libraries to make use of the Google Photos API. The software uses the Google API to upload the photos to Google Photos. As we're not going to be using this feature, we'll modify the installation script. Using your preferred text editor, find the line and comment out where it calls the test connection function. After making the change, we can run the setup shell script. As this is the first time we're running the script, it'll show an error that a configuration file hasn't been created. I won't be using the email or the Google storage features, so I'll answer no. However, I will use the photo effects feature. Once the installation process completes, it'll create a photo booth shell script. Before running it, we'll need to tell the operating system that we want the software to run on the touchscreen display. Once we do that, we can run the script and if we turn our attention to the display, we'll see the software in action. While doing that, you might notice that the orientation of the interface is rotated relative to how you want it to look. Fortunately, changing that is very simple. Using the sudo command and your favorite text editor, we'll need to edit the config.txt file located in the boot subdirectory. By using the parameter lcd underscore rotate equal to 2, we'll be able to rotate the interface 180 degrees. With that done, we're ready to assemble the rest of our photo booth. I've modified an official Raspberry Pi case so that it fits the Raspberry Pi 4. You're welcome to use any enclosure of your preference, including a 3D printed one. As I want the photo booth to be mobile, I'll also power it by using a portable 5 volt charger. We can log back in over SSH and configure Raspbian to run the photo booth software automatically once it starts up. To do this, we'll use our favorite text editor with the command sudo to create a file inside the etsy systemd user directory. I'll call this file photoboot.service. The contents of the file are fairly straightforward. It'll need a human readable description, the location of the file that we want to run, and a special parameter called wanted by. We'll also include the export command that we manually typed before as part of our photo booth software. In order to tell the operating system it should run these files, we'll need to use the system control command. To make sure that everything is recognized, we can use the list unit files option and search for our photo booth service. If everything is working as expected, we can enable the service and if we run it manually, we should see the interface show up on our screen. We can try taking a picture, and if you're using the same case as I am, you'll notice that the orientation of the camera is flipped 180 degrees. This has nothing to do with the orientation of the display that we had before, but of the physical camera itself. If you need to solve this issue, you can stop the service and modify once again the touch selfie software. If we use the system control command once again to start the photo booth service, we can see that now when we take a picture, the orientation is correct. So as a final test of the photo booth software, we can reboot the operating system and if everything goes according to plan, the software should run automatically. The last thing I want to do is be able to access the photo without the need to set up the Google Photos interface. So as a simple solution, I've created a Python Power web server that will allow me to access the photos by using a web browser. 
In my particular setup, the photos are stored inside the touch selfie directory, so I'll need to specify that on the settings.py script. I'll also need to create a directory called static, and inside that directory, a link to the location of the photos that should be the same as in settings.py. I can quickly test the web server by running the app.py script. And if I go to my browser and access the IP address of the Pi with the port 8000, I should see all the photos that have been taken by the Touch Selfie software. Now that we've verified that it's working correctly, we'll also want the web server to run once the operating system starts. To do this, we'll follow the same process that we did before and create a service file that will be run by the system control command. Similar to what we did before, we can use the system control command to reload all the services and start the photo gallery. If this is working correctly, we can enable the service so that when we reboot the system, it'll run both the touch selfie software as well as the web server to access the photos. So there you have it, we've used a Raspberry Pi 4 alongside a camera and the touchscreen display to create a photo booth that will allow us to take selfies anywhere we go. So there you have it, we've successfully built a Raspberry Pi powered photo booth. I'm almost perfectly happy with it. It'd be nice to use some of the other features that are already included in the software like being able to email the photos right on the spot. Can you get that to work? Let us know by going to the website element14 forward slash presents and sharing your findings with the community. We will see you next time.